Good morning. This is Judy Gula with Artistic Artifacts, and we're located in Alexandria, Virginia, uh, with a brick and mortar. And we also have a website where you can shop 24-7, artisticartifacts.com. So today on the schedule is talking about some journals. Um, I love fabric, and I make fabric books, and I like make fabric memory books of my travels and things, and I also crave paper. <laughs> so it's a little hard to make some decisions sometimes, but I'm gonna only focus on what I do with paper. Now, we did a previous uh, YouTube that talked about jelly printing with mixed media paper. So what that does, because I'm not a real good planner, I kind of like to let things happen and then I have a drawer of papers and as I'm putting things together I move them around and such. So I am very used to working with a flat piece of paper. So this was flat, I printed both sides, and this is mixed media paper, it takes a lot of water, a lot of glue, a lot of stuff. This is tissue paper that's been put down. So what happens is I kind of do these as individual sheets and then I assemble them by just stitching here with um, thread on my sewing machine to create my signatures in my book. So you can see that that's how I normally work. Um, oh, here's another one. All right. So then I create my own cover. I put my books in order. And when I'm waiting for a thought, they're all there and, and together. So normally, I don't work in a journal that it has a signature or binding already in it. Well, we have received these wonderful journals from India. These are vintage sari. So they have been worn, they have been used, and they are considered ceremonial, special occasion saris, and they have put them in these journals. Inside the journals are cotton rag. So it's, fat, it's paper that have been made from scraps of cotton, and it has a fabulous uh, feeling. So I'm gonna t show you what I'm doing with that journal and I'm gonna intersperse it and try and show you some things that I've done with some other journals with books. But this is new for me. I'm, as I said, I'm normally a one sheet girl. Um, I just have stacks and stacks of pages. I do the whole page, at least three layers of paint, jelly plate, stencils, that type of stuff. So this is kind of where I'm used to starting to work. Um, let me show you, sorry, I'm going to jump around a minute, but one, um, I'm not going to go to the sorry journal yet. I'm going to show you one more journal. So this is my first attempt at working in a book that exists already. So my husband and I, for a special anniversary, went to Cinque Terre, Italy, and I have to collect things, and I use these Alvin bags. We sell these. And I stuff everything from my trip into there because I can't really assemble the book at the time. So like I have baggage claims, I have my train tickets. I was really good on this one, I was collecting things. I painted the backgrounds, didn't do a lot. This still could have some work. Like I would put some stencil in here, or some stamps. So it's ever evolving. See how I have background here. So we went to, we took a train ride into Florence. This was a paper bag that I bought something in. We were there for sunflower season. Good morning, Seth Apter. Hi, Seth. How you doing? Um, we did, we, they have this place in multiple places in Italy where you put locks on to show your love is everlasting. And so I was posting that once and then my cousin painted this card for me and sent it. So it has to go in my book too. Uh, so that was pretty awesome in my tags and things. So you can see it's not finished, but working with a spine was something new for me. All right. So now we have this fabulous journal. 
what um, actually right side up would be pretty good for you guys. Again, they're all different in different parts of the sari and you can feel the texture, it's just fabulous. And as I said, inside of the book is this cotton rag fabric. It, it, we just did a blog post and we had some pictures of when I actually visited the factory. They have bags and bags of cotton rags that they put into this big processor with uh, water and they create this pulp. And then they have different stations, two men on either side making these huge pieces of, fab of paper. I'm trying to think of how large they are. Um, oh, Chris is gonna show you. See, this is, this is what we have to come. But each one of those sheets of paper were made by two guys with dipping a frame into the pulp, shaking the water out, putting it on this big stack of paper, squeezing the water out. They're in shorts and these rubber boots and there's water blog everywhere. Post. Hmm? Your blog post. Blog post, yes, it's in the blog post. So, um, and it was amazing. The other thing that was so nice about visiting this factory was they, it is a, um, an ex experiment in creating jobs for people who would normally not have jobs or be trained for them. So there is different process of making the paper, painting the paper, printing on the paper, wood blocking, and then they assemble all of these great boxes, all the boxes that we have and the papers. Chris is gonna show you some boxes that we have all came out of this factory. So. I just, I love it when it works both ways. We get this amazing creative product and we're able to help people all over the world. So, there you go, that's my spiel. Anyway, the paper's really cool. So what I've done is I took my zip bag and I wanted to experiment with a couple of things. One, how much water could this, pro this paper take? This is a Solvi transfer directly on this paper. Then I have some, I use soft gel. I don't use matte medium a whole lot because I don't like the amount of water that's in it. It's tissue paper. And then here's a ribbon. So when you get the, I get just the ends, you know, the small quarter inch of the bolt or the little piece of ribbon from what's on the, at the end. So this buckled when I worked on it um, but it dried really nicely, so there was not such, you know, it, I think it did a really good job. Then, what I did here, this is literally putting paint on my jelly plate, a small one, using it, and then taking the brayer. Can you see the texture in the paper? I just thought that was fantastic. So this, I just did every other page type of thing. And then we did have other people on the trip with us, but these are my girlfriends and, and we went to Indy to celebrate our 60th birthday. Yes, 60. I don't know why I still feel 25, but I'm 60. So that was why we, one of the things. So these are my girlfriends that went. And then I have blank pages and I have painted pages. So I go through and paint some pages, just the first layer. And I start putting my picture. So we spent one evening in Old Delhi. And you hear about the cows. Yes, it's true. They're everywhere. They, you, I don't know how they know who belongs to who because the cows are everywhere. They're bells. The bells, is the bells? Okay, mm -hmm. well, good. Cause, um, and then I, so I, I kind of started lining this up. I was, I was so panicked because there was so much I wanted to tell you, but I think we're going to have to have this be multi, uh, multi ones. So then I would take, I don't clean my brayer off between paints. So you can see where it's picked up the paint from a previous page and come over here. I just, I love that technique. You have a question mm -hmm. is, do you put something behind the sheet you are working on to protect it while um, gluing and painting? Mm, no. <laughs> It, it, it can't hurt. I recommend working with these goddess sheets. So there's there, these are Teflon sheets or parchment paper. So if you, um, I kind of 
as am a Tasmanian devil when I'm working in my studio, especially with papers and paints and things. I just have this huge surface that's the size of a door and I just am grabbing and pulling and you know, sometimes I'm shaking a bag out and putting it on the floor. So I usually probably can't find my Teflon sheet or my parchment paper, but it can't hurt. I would only say that it would help and we certainly have them available for you. Are there any other questions? Okay. Um, so again, I just kind of start throwing things in here. So this is a very special pottery that's made in India. It's actually ground stone, not clay, which I thought was very interesting. And this is all in Jaipur. And this is, we went to several block printing places where we actually were in block printing factories. If you can see behind this picture, you'll see that. And we also made samples. So that was a lot of fun. Again, my, my th girlfriends who are all turning 60. Then this page, I started using a uh, stencil with it. I wanna say it was probably this one and I just move it around. So when I use a stencil, I don't put it down here and frame it and put it that way. I say, hmm, I like this flower and I use a um, stamp, I'll show you, uh, to be able to do pieces of it. So even this page that is totally covered was started maybe like this, but then it ended up being pieces of it. So try to look at your stencils as part of the design process and not have the stencil be the whole process. Someone told me a long time ago that they use these old photo albums that have the sticky stuff to hold their stencils. Um, it works sometimes, but I don't always get them back in the pages. One of the most exciting things for me when I was in India was we went to a village where they, oops, oh, I went too far where they, we went to an India, um, indigo vat dyeing place. So this is a hole in the ground that is 10 feet deep. And it has an indigo vat in it. And you can see he's putting probably seven yards at least in there. And they wait. And, I, and so I have this one here where they're waiting and maybe they're stirring. And then they carry it, they take it out. And then they lay it in the dirt. So anytime you're buying fabrics from us or fabrics from someone else that are made in India, understand that this is their drying process and you definitely want to wash them. So that's kind of the indigo process that we saw, but let me tell you a little bit about the pages. These are probably, my one page is that I did mostly uh, get some stuff done. So I have just the paper here. And I know that I wanted this size picture on this. So you can see they're stenciling from here down and from here up. So I didn't do the whole page. This is some of the fabulous hand screened paper. So this is actually paper here. This piece this is hand block paper this is our picture and i used fabric and i have this so this whole piece here was done separately sewed and then applied with soft gel to this page and i still had a little bit of paper showing so i painted with acrylic and some watercolor i wanted to pick up this woman's pink pants I thought she was beautiful. And then I had a little tab that I wanted that I did pink. So this was a whole unit that I created off to the side and then I put it into the book. So that's another way that I work. This is glued directly onto the paper with the soft gel. So you can see that really took the glue and the paint very nicely and it does not disintegrate. 
The other thing that I do is I love these transfers. So this is a transfer that was printed on Paper Solvy, which is a quilting tool. Liz Kettle came up with it. With matte medium and P Paper Solvy, you can print out and then transfer it. So we did some alcohol inks on the jelly plates. That was a previous YouTube. So I took that piece and then I took a print. This is from the wall of the Handicraft Museum in Delhi. And then I have some jelly plate printed papers and I kind of collage them and always have to have some texture in there. The question is uh -huh. what is soft gel? I will show you that um, when I I'll get, hold that thought. So then this is how they deliver fabric. So they tie it in bundles and ride a little motorcycle and that's how they deliver it. This is some handmade paper. I again picked my stencil. This is not finished by any stretch of the imagination. I think it needs some stamps and some other stuff. With, that's why I'm saying we need to do more than part one. We have to part two. Uh, let's see. And then this one, what would be an India book without wood blocks, right? So this is a wood block printed sample that was on fabric. Again, the end. This is another sample. So sometimes when you're testing some of these products out as you get them in there, you might have find you want to go back through your drawers. I always use those things. This was when we were doing some demos on um, foiling. Here's a jelly plate printed piece of paper that I ripped. This is actually, a, I printed this on paper. No, I printed it on fabric. Because I just, again, I, I have to have that textile texture in there. This is scraps of hand block printed fabric that I actually am buying from her, Shamal and Puneet. And I've used them in my quilt. This is all hand block printed. And then I start going through and finding pages. Now, I was totally, completely thrilled. This is a famous tourist picture for India, promoting India. And normally they have two women in these beautiful red saris. But when we got there, it was, it was like, oh my gosh, I've seen that on the web. They advertise India this way. And I'm here, I'm standing right here where they got water in the cistern. So this was, that was very exciting. And it's actually a really cool picture um, of the stairs going up and going down. And for the whole village, they don't get water out of this now, but they used to get water. This is where they went to fill their buckets. Um, this is one of the palaces. So you can see, I kind of have things set up. I'm gonna try to do an extra page. This is a window. So we'll, I'll do a cutout and, and a page somehow. I haven't quite got that, but this is what you're seeing when you look through the window. When we came back from India, it was right at the beginning of COVID. So I never really got some blog prints done, I post done. I never really got to talk to people about it. We came back on the 21st and we were um, quarantined for two weeks and then it was back to work. So this has really been exciting for me to go back through the trip and, and really considering the turmoil that the world was in, it was really amazing trip. And the Indian people were very kind to us when all of this was going on. And we're gonna return to India in March of 22. And so we're gonna, there'll be details following that trip to, so that you can sign up. It's gonna be very small, 18 to 20 people and we will uh it's 15 days and so we're working on the promotional it should be out soon so look forward to that um, my husband and i will be lead, leading the tour so this is um kind of wonderful that, that this is bringing it all back because i can't wait to go back all right so let me show you a couple of things that i did so this is a little five by seven and I'm just gonna pick a page. Gel press. Gel, this is gel press. And this is, see, this is my messy brayer. This is how I operate. And I will tell you that one of the things, we have artistic artifacts paint. This is a textile paint, so it can be used on fabric, but it's also great for paper. And then we have these wonderful fresco finish 
paints by Seth, designed colors by Seth. And I love to use them with my paints. So I mix them up. Uh, one is a glossy finish, one is a little bit more matte finish. Um, and I do, this is purely a place to mix my paint. I'm not gonna print with this. I am going to actually take the brayer and I'm going to lightly, it's very light, add my paint. If I push a little harder, I get a little different coverage. Yeah, this. I don't know about you, but you know, when it's, I find when there's a little bit of color, it helps give me a direction of what I'm gonna do on that page versus being white with nothing. So that is all I did for all of my pages was that. So it was a simple thing. I felt it showed the texture nicely and it mixed the matte finish of the fresco with the more glossy finish of the um, artistic artifacts paints. So mix them up, it's all good. Okay. Then we were talking about This is, this is kind of my collection. Sorry, this is what happens when I'm at home. Everything falls on the floor. This is my pile of ephemera, so to speak, and things that I'm going to use. So let's see, soft gel. So let me now answer the question about the soft gel. We, we do, so, there's acrylic mediums. One of the most common ones that lots of people use is, are, is matte medium. And acrylic mediums, it's, it, for us in the papers, when we're doing things, it's an adhesive. This has a lot of water in it. Can you, can you see? All right, I don't want a lot of water. So then what they do is they make it in different levels of thickness. So soft gel is again similar to matte medium and it's a glue, but, 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 all right. It doesn't pour. Then it's more they, like a paste. It's more like a paste. And then they have a couple more, like molding paste is thicker still, less water. So when I'm using my papers and tissue papers, what I found, and I can assure you this took me quite a while to figure this out, and then it was like, oh my goodness. Um, because most of us that are doing mixed media, we're using glues and, and different kinds of crafters glues, which is perfectly fine. You know, whatever works for you is, is the best way to do it. But I found that I like the versatility to this. I could use it on the top of mine to cover a fabric or cover a paper, but it also is an excellent glue. And my glue stick that I use. And you can use that on canvas? Yes, absolutely use it on canvas. Sometimes I take my little um, stitch meditations and I mount them onto a wood board or a canvas and I will put this soft gel on the back of it. Um, don't use clear glue with textiles. Trust me, it's not pretty. It's awful. Um, so you want to always be using a white glue. Crafters, plus, crafters, we use a glue. We have a glue here, and that's a white glue. That's uh, Sharon will take care of telling you what that length is. Where's my little credit cardy thing? Oh, there it is. Okay, so. Let's look at this. One of the things that we have is decoupage papers. Oh, see, I like this one a lot. I picked it out twice. That never happens to you, right? So 
these are, we have these on the website, lots and lots of them. It's in this horrible plastic stuff. But this is rice paper. So rice paper is even stronger than tissue paper. I use both. So how I work with this, you can, um, I think I need to buy more. You are working on your goddess sheet as your, as your base so you can yes. wipe it off? Yes, you only, you can let everything dry on this and you s wipe it off with a scrubby. So I paint on these, I do gluing on these, all kinds of stuff. All right, so I use this gift card, credit card, to put a thin layer of glue on it. It's a really great tool to be able to um, get a thin, controllable layer. Does it dry glossy? Some have a matte finish. You can buy it matte or you can find my, buy it gold. Um, matte or gloss. Sorry, I'm trying to find the words four cups of coffee later. Um, you know, you can get it at, we do have small containers on our website, but you can also find them, you know, if you have a fine art store that's closer to you, then that's a good thing to get there too, because it is all part of, I like golden products. Don't ask me, I don't know why, I just is the one I've been using. And as you can see, I am going to, this is tissue paper. Um, I never wrap presents, but I'm always in the gift section because I am looking for tissue paper that's patterned. Seems to be, you might get your gift in a paper bag though. <laughs> try to not put things in the middle. I always try to work in thirds. My artwork is that way. These uh, rice papers are really wonderful. I tend to, as you could see, rip them up. Uh, what's the difference between the gel medium and the and gesso? Okay, great question. Gesso is what's considered a primer. So it is going to be a white, very thick uh, paint. It's much it's much more of a paint. All right. Okay. I know, I'm, I'm, this is, I'm so excited, I just can't tell you, and I know I'm running out of time. Just, and we will do another one, because I'm gonna work on my journal, and show you uh, some, I'll work on some more pages, and I'll talk, because now we can, once you get your pages kind of laid out to the point where you want, and glued, you can add um, gelatos, you can add India ink, you can add your, um, it's just, there's, there's so many layers. Again, I always talk about complex cloth. Complex cloth is the same thing with, I just always make bits and pieces and then I have them available to me when I start my journal. Because the bits and pieces are kind of mindless creating and you don't overthink it, you're just having fun. And then they're all there for you. And that one will stick eventually. Would you put gesso on these pages if you were going to paint on them? No, I would not. Um, because gesso is going to hide the texture of the page. And part of the reason why you're using this journal is because of the handcrafted cotton rag paper. So 
just so I would not use as a preparation for your pages. I would personally buy a less expensive journal. Um, these are premium journals. They are, and I would, if you want gesso in there, that's going to give you a surface to paint differently. I would do it in a whole different pack. I would not use it for these. Great questions. Great questions. Before you go. Yes. Do you want to talk about the two pieces hanging over your shoulder? Oh, okay, yes. And I actually have the list of our future Facebook Lives. So I will, we'll do an update in April. I'll show you how I use a little more of the, the stencils, the pens, the car and dash, all of those things will get used in this journal. And I'll, so we'll do an update. It might take us a couple months, but stay tuned, we'll do it. So what we have behind me, is um, these are from India. We have a jelly roll that we have 10 by 10s and five by fives pieces of fabric. So they're small pieces, but lots and lots of variety. So I've tried to do little blocks of things with them. This piece I actually have had for a long time and I actually this is one of the things I thought was kind of cool was I scanned it so I can now use it in my journal whereas I still have it on my quilt this is a beautiful trim so I, I kind of have drawers of things drawers of hearts drawers of these pen, pins I love these pins and so I assembled this using all my Indian fabric. This piece here, again, I'm still using the fabric that came in the five by fives. I, I think I have enough for another two quilts. This is cyanotype piece that uh, teacher Susan Gantz did for, um, and I bought from her. And then these are cyanotype at the end. Indigo, indigo, I love indigo. And then I used ha some hand stitching, some French knots. I echoed in here and I uh, assembled the blocks. So this is just kind of shows you the variation that are in these 10 by 10 and five by five Indian uh, pre-cuts that we have. So it was a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed it. And it, again, quite different for me. And then these pieces, this is one of the things I think the Indian culture is very much about recycle. So these may have come, embroideries come from clothing that they have, maybe the rest of it disintegrated. The Hmong people do this also, where they take all their embroideries and then they reuse them when the cotton cloth is given out. So we have multiple sizes of these. This is like a table runner size. Um, we keep wanting to do a Facebook live selling it's and it's been a little crazy key so we hope we'll get those to you soon um, and we're still we we get orders from shipments from India probably once a month now I have a lot of product that I'm waiting to have made in Indonesia as well some more chops and some more batik panels we have a couple of new artists so we are shopping globally and we appreciate your support. I think it's a great partnership in the handicraft industry to be able to take an artist from a different part of the world and incorporate them into our art and the global peace. That's what we're looking for. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sorry. I hopefully didn't talk too fast, but I really have a lot of stuff I want to tell you. So we'll do it. The next week we're going to talk about art quilts. We'll have a little bit of a trunk show. Um, Kathy Edwards, who works with us, has some art quilts. Chris Vinn is an art quilter. I'm an art quilter. So it's National Quilting Day, and we just wanted to show you a different way of quilting. So we'll, we're going to have kind of a trunk show. March 27th, we have an embroidery uh, demonstration with Kathy Lincoln. So she w did one previously, so we're going to do one of those once a month. And then on April 3rd, we have Gwen LaFleur that's going to come and do a Facebook Live. And then probably the week after that, I'll have an update for you on the journal. So we'll do another journal posting. Any questions? Thank you so much for being here with us this morning.
Visit us on artisticartifacts.com, Facebook. Please join our Creative Minds, Artistic Artifacts Creative Minds on Facebook, where we create a community. And um, have a great day.